degree. So when they start college, yes. they start college as a junior oh. instead of a freshman. And um, that, that is really financially beneficial, but that's really, they're really prepared. And they have a leg. Now, as we went through the process, um, we had the boat people. This is Carrie. Your story fascinates me. Can you talk a little bit more about the Vietnamese refugee uh, transfer from like Vietnam to the United States and how and what you thought of it as a teacher? They had a much more difficult time um, adjusting, and it took them longer to yeah. be able to, you know, get into the you know educational system. <laughs> Since you've been in the Little Saigon community for a really long time now, can you elaborate on um, what you've done for the community? Well, uh, first of all, I've been here since 73, so I was here before <laughs> the Vietnamese, you know, actually came to Westminster. And one of the things that was so exciting is um, the change in the whole city and how prosperous uh, it was. And it really... Um, kind of changed the whole complexion of the city, which is was really exciting. Um, I was a city councilwoman for the city of Westminster as well. And um, I'll tell you a little story. It was really pretty unique. My very first event that I went to, um, I had bought my Ao Yai, mm. two Ao Yais. I already told you about my favorite one. And um, when I walked into the restaurant, there was just light bulbs flashing and flashing. And I was really taken aback because I didn't realize that what they were doing was going out to the uh, whole community, even overseas. So that's when I realized that I needed to have more allies because I was going to be on TV all the time. Um, but that I, I've tried. I was a member of um, the Boys and Girls Club. You know, we we tried. We knew uh, we didn't try. We actually got it done so that the Boys and Girls Club could uh, help students at the high school level instead of just the elementary level as well. Um, I'm responsible for the freeway. Um, staying within its bounds, they were going to take many homes in Westminster, and so I worked on that actually for uh, almost 20 years, and, and now, of course, it's you know coming to an end. But um, <clears throat> so I've I've been in the community for a really long time, and um, a lot of my neighbors, you know, are Vietnamese, and I've just really you know enjoyed it. I, I've enjoyed the the dancing um, and the singing, you know, and it, it's just, that part's really wonderful. So how many Huntington Beach Junior High School District students have participated in dual enrollment ever since that we started having dual enrollment classes? Well, again, we started in uh, 2016 and we've had about 7,000 wow. students participate in dual enrollment and they've taken about 11,000 classes. And um, we, one of the things that's really great about it is uh, we have uh, students every year that when they graduate, they have their high school diploma and an AA degree. So when they start college, yes. they start college as a junior oh. instead of a freshman. And um, that, that is really financially beneficial, yeah. but that's really, they're really prepared. And they have a leg up on other students because when colleges look at a, the dual enrollment and they know you've taken all those college classes, well, they also know that, that you would be more likely to be successful in their classes because you've already had the college experience. That's incredible. Are these dual enrollment classes available online? Yes, some of the classes are online, it just depends, and uh, some of the classes, of course, are in person. Mm -hmm. Many of the classes are taught by our teachers, so the oh. students would know the teachers. Oh. Um, and uh, a another good thing about it is that because they're taught here, you know, at the high schools, yeah. uh, there's tutoring available and, the, you know, teachers keep a really close watch on you, uh, which I mentioned earlier in time management, <laughs> you yeah. kind of learn that more. Because mm -hmm. when you go to college, they don't really uh, watch you quite as much. <laughs> so, you know, that sometimes that doesn't work out so well for some of our students, but, um, but that's, but we do have online and uh, 
here at the campus. Yeah. That's great news. If students like me are um, interested in signing up, who should they talk to? Well, they need to go and talk to their counselor or their guidance tech. And, you know, it depends, like, if you're, what your goal is. If you want to go into a career uh, pathway, you know, they can advise you about what to, to, which classes to take. If you want, if you're looking really to transfer to a four-year college, they can, um, you know, help you with that, too. They can also help with application process and things like that. So your counselor and your guidance tech are the ones that you should go and talk to. As a representative of the Board of Trustees, um, how are you ensuring that dual enrollment is working for our students? Well, first of all, we monitor that, but that has been a goal of the uh, board because we want to have as many opportunities for our students as possible. We want our students to be successful long term whatever they decide to do, you know, in their career or, you know, in their uh, advanced educational experience. And so that is one of the goals of the Board of Trustees. So we have worked uh, very closely with the community colleges uh, to make sure that we can expand our offerings. We have our teachers, um, you, you need to have a master's degree in whatever it is you're, you're teaching. And so we um, offer, you know, offer that for them as well. Not the master's degree part, but we make sure that um, that if they wanted to get a master's degree, that that would be great because it would help us offer more classes. And most, a lot of our teachers have master's degrees. So Derek, what? Tell me about your parents. You know, what do you think that they would want for you with regard to dual enrollment? Yes, um, my parents really value education. So if I knew about um, dual enrollment sooner or earlier, um, I think my parents would encourage me to take dual enrollment because not only am I getting uh, high school credit, but I'm also getting college credit, which would transfer to like four-year colleges. That's something that I want to aim for as a senior. And so um, I feel like my parents would really support that decision. Oh, that's really good. Yeah, we try and communicate, you know, the dual enrollment to our families um, through our guidance technicians and the counselors. Mm -hmm. We also uh, put it up on our website um, so that you know the parents can go. Uh, and I know we've ab we also advertise the dual enrollment classes in different publications that we think you know various parts of our community would uh, you know really appreciate that. But I know um, that you know so many of our Vietnamese families um, worked you know they worked so hard. Uh, when they came to here to make a successful yes. um, home for their students and for their you know children, and now we're looking at you, which would be the grand um, the grandson <laughs> probably <laughs> of the initial um, Vietnamese when they first you know came over. Mm -hmm. But you know, uh, having education has always been one of the things that is very attractive about the Vietnamese culture mm -hmm. because they they really. Uh, love that so much mm -hmm. and it's one of the things that as a school board you know we really try and foster uh, that that's why we now have the Vietnamese immersion um, you know in our schools in here you know at, at Westminster High School because culture uh, is very important and understanding culture is really important yeah. too and that's why I, I love to come to all the events here at Westminster High mm -hmm. School because it it's just great I know we have Vietn some, a Vietnamese student or two on the Hispanic uh, you know flamenco dancing yeah. and vice versa mm -hmm. and that's wonderful for understanding and that's going to really help uh, our students you know later in life because mm -hmm. they're they're You know, able to get along with so many different cultures. Các em học sinh thân mến, các em có sẵn sàng để nâng các kỹ năng của mình lên mức cao hơn chưa? Hãy sẵn sàng đi, bởi vì học khu trung học Huntington Beach đang bổ sung thêm các lớp giáo dục kỹ thuật nghề hay CTE trong niên học tới. Cho dù em thích về kỹ thuật, y tế, kinh doanh hay các ngành nghề khác, đều sẽ có lớp ưa thích cho mỗi người. Các lớp CTE được thiết kế để cho học sinh có trải nghiệm thực tế trong đời sống. Hãy tận dụng cơ hội này để phát triển các kỹ năng đáng giá, giúp các em chuẩn bị cho sự thành công. Các lớp CTE sẽ khác nhau tùy vào các trường trong học khu. Em nhớ hỏi chuyên gia hướng dẫn của mình để xem các lớp nào được dạy ở trường em. Đừng bỏ mất cơ hội này để khám phá về các đam mê và tiềm năng của mình.
Yeah, I started my teaching career here in this district in 1973. Mm -hmm. And um, I, when I started teaching, I did a lot of sec second language learning. And I was actually the district director for second language learning. And we had many Hispanic students and many, many Vietnamese students. And uh, it was really um, very fun and eye-opening. Um, when they first asked me to teach, uh, they called me the day before school started. And they said, we need a teacher for our uh, second language learning biology class. Would you do it? Because I was doing regular you know, biology and, and health and things. And I said, sure, I don't have a problem with that. And oh my gosh, the first day I realized that you cannot, you know, teach in a normal, uh, regular manner because you have people in your class that don't understand English, you know, at that at that level. And so I wrote the entire curriculum and uh, won an award uh, for it, you know. And it was really interesting. And when I went into administration. Um, my last year of teaching before I went in, my first period class had like 20 different languages in it. So that, that was pretty amazing. So. This is Carrie, your story fascinates me. Can you talk a little bit more about the Vietnamese refugee uh, transfer from like Vietnam to the United States and how and what you thought of it as a teacher? Well, it was very un unusual and it was very different um, because I came from a community that, that was not diverse at all. Um, but when the Vietnamese first came over, the, the first Vietnamese to come in were highly educated because they had been going to school in Vietnam. And so they all spoke French and uh, they didn't speak English, but it, it they were bilingual in French and Vietnamese. So for them, it was an easier transition for them to learn English and then, you know, move on. Now, as we went through the process, uh, we had the boat people. They had a much more difficult time um, adjusting and it took them longer to be able to, you know, get into the, you know, educational system tried really hard. Um, there were some just heartbreaking stories. I, I remember two. Um, one was in my biology class and um, this really sharp uh, student and he always did his homework and he always got A's on everything and he was just, you know, a pleasure to have in class. And all of a sudden um, he wasn't doing his homework and it was just a a completely like a completely different person and um, I asked him I said well what is wrong because I knew something was wrong because the transition from being you know right on top of things to not doing anything was really significant and I'll never forget it he looked at me and he said well I came in and um, my aunt brought me in but there's not room in the house for me so I'm living in my car and what happened was the time had changed, and so it was dark, and he didn't have any way to see. And I told him um, that was just heartbreaking. And also, he was hungry, you know, and we, of course, you know, gave food and everything. But from that, that experience, what I did is I came in to my classroom uh, about an hour and a half early because I had a late start because I taught later in the day. Mm -hmm. And I opened my classroom up to him and to anybody, and I used to bring food in, and it was warm, and I said, you can come in and you can do whatever you want to do, whichever homework you want to do, um, if you want to sleep, if you want to just eat the bananas and cereal bars, you can certainly do that as well. Mm -hmm. But um, I wanted him to have a, you know, a safe place yeah. so that he could achieve, and it was really, exciting because eventually he came back to me after he had graduated and I had him as a sophomore so he came back about three years later and thanked me and that I thought was just you know really a wonderful wonderful story because I know that that was really good good for him and he was you know in college by then which was great yeah. you know and then uh, another story which was a little 
for me more sad. Again, a female student, and she was just so brilliant and wonderful. But um, I'm not sure of exactly the transition, but I think that when you're 18 years old, you, you couldn't go to school anymore and the family wasn't gonna get any more money for her. And so they made her drop out of high school and um, she had to go and work in a nail salon. And I talked to her parents, um, actually it was her aunt, and to try and get them to leave her there. And they just said no, that she, she couldn't do that. So there was a lot of you know issues yeah. then. Um, but w that's one of the things I'm so proud of the community for because they really overcame a lot of those you know negative issues when they first came here. Mrs. Carey, do you have any final words for the audience? Well, I do. I, I'm just really thrilled to be here today, and I'm thrilled to be able to talk to you about dual enrollment. This is an absolutely wonderful opportunity for your students, and I do hope that everyone will really take advantage of it. And as I said it before, you know, these are college credit classes, and they are free, and your students get a lot of help with them. And so it's really going to be beneficial to uh, you and to your students if uh, we take advantage of that. So please, um, you know, call the guidance techs and have your student, student go in, you can look at things online, and that would be really very, very helpful. And please spread the word, because we are um, a dual enrollment um, school district, so we are known for that, you know, and what other school districts don't really have dual enrollment, and it's, it's really a very popular and um, very good for our families. Uh, lastly, I want to thank a Little Saigon TV for this opportunity to come and speak with you about one of our just really outstanding programs. We have something in the district for everybody, but uh, it's really important that we get the word out and we want to thank a Little Saigon TV for helping us uh, educate the community. You'll probably see me again because we are going to be sharing about some of our other programs as well. We have so many in the district. Uh, CTE, which is uh, career technical education, and we also have the Academy for the Performing Arts. We have uh, many things at each different school, uh, so we look forward to uh, coming and speaking with uh, the community again. So I want to again thank Little Gu Saigon TV for this opportunity. Thank you, Little Saigon TV, for tuning in for this um, interview. Uh, also, thank you to Trustee Carey for all that you do and for all that you continue to do. It's been a pleasure to interview you. Oh, great. Thank you so much, Derek. And it really has been um, my pleasure to be here to explain about all of our programs.